the way that the Quran describes things actually makes sense to me. And also, did you know that Allah is beyond gender? Do you know that actual Muslims, if they do follow Sharia law, <laughs> would uh, not support your non-binary ass? In fact, they would do the exact opposite of supporting your non-binary ass. Why don't you do some research in that department? My friend Blair White said, this is a woman appropriating being trans, appropriating being a Muslim. She does so from the safety of America, a country she bashes, while actual women and trans people in Muslim countries suffer in ways she could never imagine. That's called privilege, actual privilege. This video is a few months old, but it's important for today's topic, which is why are queer people refinding religion just started reading the Quran and I am so excited about it. People thought when I first asked that I just wanted to read it out of curiosity, but I want to read it to study it. I started following somebody on social media that teaches the Quran and hosts a Quran book club for Muslims and non-Muslims. So I'm really excited to start going to that. This whole book is just blowing my mind and I am so excited. I got sticky notes so that I could mark out things that I was, ex that I was drawn to. And uh, I'm not even through the first chapter and <laughs> I already have a bunch of sticky notes. I'm definitely going to have to buy more tabs. I'm honestly having a whole revolution with myself where the way that I describe the universe and the things that I believe in are actually described in the Quran of believing in Allah and I I've never thought that I believed in God before and now I'm really having a revolution of self of I think I actually believe in God. One thing to note here is that the majority of these queer people are not refinding Christianity or Judaism, right? They are specifically going more towards Islam, towards witchcraft, paganism, most likely because they hate white people and Western ideas. <laughs> But more importantly, I am fairly confident that I found the three reasons why they are, at the very least, showing an interest in a higher power. Number one, more oppression, more woke points. Again, they are seeking these minority religions, these fringe outlier religions. Look how anti-racist I am. I'm white and queer and still support the Muslim community and the Muslim religion. Another one is paganism or witchcraft. I've been seeing this a ton on TikTok. I've even noticed a lot of them on dating sites, specifically Tinder for some reason, where people are calling themselves witchy or witchy queers. Queer by plus poly and RA, I don't know what RA means, maybe like a rights activist, I don't know. Witchy, sex positive, nature loving, traveling artist, storyteller, and gardener. Notice again how this person's profile says queer and not gay, okay? We see this again all over TikTok. I'm Mandolin at Witch Bitch and I'm just responding to a couple of the comments um, that were left on this video. Um, ZZ are actually my pronouns. I've also noticed that a lot of them own witchy stores or at the very least work for them. I don't need a man, I'm a bisexual with a god complex. <laughs> just so people aren't gonna get it twisted, I personally don't think that paganism is a negative belief system at all, actually. I kind of agree with a lot of what they say. A lot of them believe in manifesting the law of attraction, respecting nature. But my question for you is, why do so many young queer people feel drawn towards it? The answer is number two, desperate for guidance. I mean, some of these people are just so lost that they are now calling themselves demon, what is it called? Demonologist? It sounds, first of all, that sounds like the study of demons, not somebody that like, worships demons. You know, I wanted to make a video because there's something that I've seen recently that's really starting to upset me and bother me. And that's the fact, you know, you guys know I work with Infernals. I'm a demonologist and a witch. And, you know, I'm seeing people that are in demonology who are transphobic. And it's not just that, witches too. It makes me sad because we're already in a marginalized community as it is, and then we're sitting here fighting amongst each other, and most of us, our whole lives, were the black sheep. There it is! Black sheep. Said it out loud that time. Wow, a brand new place where I can just be myself and nobody will judge me? Come on down! So you're a bit witchy, but not really comfy calling yourself a witch? That's totally fine. Magic doesn't look like one thing. Your everyday mundane tasks can totally be magic. Everyone has different things that make them feel powerful and different ways of connecting to that power. Give yourself the freedom to explore yours. And if you need a little help along the way, or you're just looking for a cool community of queers to chat witchcraft with, Queer Coven's got you covered. Wow, a brand new place where I can go and explore myself and nobody will judge me? Again, while I agree with the sentiment of this video and the majority of what paganism is about, this is why 
those types of queer people are drawn to it. I've made videos in the past where I've spoke about in depth how leftism is becoming a religion, more specifically a cult-like religion. I call it the word of woke. Listen to what Arielle two years ago had to say because that bitch nailed it. When you don't know who you are or believe in a higher purpose, you tend to ask yourself things like, why am I here? What am I doing? What do I offer to the world? Barry Weiss said it perfectly when she was on Ben Shapiro a few weeks ago. They were talking about leftists and why wokeism is so popular. And she said this. I believe that the surge of this and the reason especially that so many young people are drawn to it is crisis of meaning and the death of God in this country. Like I, I just really believe that people are searching for some moral purpose to their life, the sense of being part of a, of a coalition of the righteous sense of being on the right side of history. I've spoken about this before, but I wanted to include this clip because I think she said this better than I have. As you guys know, I am very spiritual. I am not religious. I do believe in a higher power, in a higher being that connects us all, so to speak. I believe in souls, in energy, in life lessons. And honestly, it wasn't until I found that deeper meaning that I was able to live a fuller, more calm life. And that's just the truth. All of the things that we used to get from other structures that because of, you know, Let's be honest, like many of the fallouts of things like globalization and tech and the rest, you know, that are so much bigger than we have time for in this conversation have led people sort of grasping for meaning. Wow. OK, leaves people searching for meaning. This could not be more true because many of these leftists, in fact, do treat their beliefs like a religion. And many religions are intense, very much cult like. You have to remember, for them, it's a way of life. Remember, number two, desperate for guidance. It is becoming more and more clear. All the queer households that I've ever been to in my life have like the same things. It's fucking wild. You got the addiction collection, some weird shit in the bathroom that you wouldn't usually see in a bathroom. No walls, just fucking posters. A secret area for some mischievous shit. A table that is not made out of table you would find at the kids section of Ikea. And a plant that has been dying for five years. I mean, a lot of my ex-friends that identified as queer, or at least, like, were in that community, had at least two or more of these things in their house, so, like, where's the lie? Number three is they are afraid of what comes next. And this is a big one. Believing that the world will end soon because of climate change. Believing that you're in extreme danger because you're an LGBT person who lives in Florida. Or that you are undergoing a genocide because you are a trans person in America. I'd start to be afraid too if I believed in any of those things. Most people start to become fearful when they feel like their life in this body is coming to an end or might come to an end. And then, of course, they start looking for answers, right? To make themselves feel better. Who wouldn't? What happens to me? Where do I go? Have I been a good person? These people are desperate for guidance and they will turn to whatever they can to what makes them feel better in that moment. Sometimes it's Satanism. Wish I was kidding. Sometimes it's paganism and I am not the only one that's noticed this. There's something inherently gay about witchcraft, about magic. Um, why is it that there are so many of our LGBTQ who identify as witches or who are in the craft community? I myself being one of these people. The witch has always been kind of associated with the taboo, the perverse, the infernal. And I think that queer people feel that association as well with their queer identities. There's a connection there. Pretty much since the beginning of time, queer people have been very much connected to the divine. And I'm not saying that cis hetero people are not. The way that the divine is experienced from a queer perspective is a totally different experience. And it's something that is innately sacred. I love what she said and I agree with it for the most part, except I want to change one little tiny thing where she says, instead of queer people, I want to put actual LGBT people. Queer people have been very much connected to the divine. And I'm not saying that cis hetero people are not. I think what she's saying here is that a good majority of us before we come out, at least in the recent past, maybe not so much anymore because acceptance is better than it was years ago, but it's also getting worse. But at least a few years back when the majority of us come out of the closet, we come to a realization that we have to make a choice, right? Either choose our truth, living an authentic life, and 
by choosing that, we potentially might lose everything we own, everything we have, our friends, our family, our job. And in making this decision, which most of us do wind up, choose to live our lives authentically, we realize that all of those other things are things. Those things are not us. They are just things. And for many of us, that is the very beginning of our spiritual awakening, to realize that realizing that we're something so much bigger and so much more. At least I know it was for me. That's my overall consensus. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and let me know what religion you are in the comments because, or what if you're spiritual like me, let me know in the comments because I am indeed curious. I haven't asked a question like that in quite some time. And make sure you're following me on TikTok because I just started posting a ton of content that I've never posted on here, on there. Go and check it out. I'm also gonna be going to a ton of pride parades this year and causing a ruckus, I'm not gonna lie. So go and follow me on TikTok. Other than that, I will see you guys back here next Sunday with a brand new video. Until then, I love you, love yourselves. Keep calling out the bullshit. Bye.